This is the Million and Macaulay Podcast. Just, just feel it. Okay, now you gotta let that, you gotta let that breathe, that opening for a sure. second there. Episode sixty-four of the Million and Macaulay it's podcast. Sixty-four. If you found us by accident, thanks. It's really great. <laughs> nice to meet you. That's a sixty-four, eh? I personally lost interest in this podcast at fourteen, <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest. But I sticking it through here, you hear somebody yapping there. We haven't even introduced. We're going to introduce yet. him in a second. <laughs> I just want to say, just to cut in on that joke, nothing better than getting a punchline in twenty seconds late. But when you say you lost interest at fourteen, it's the same way the girls feel about you. That at fourteen, they also lost interest. <laughs> well played. That's real mature. Can on. I point out you two look things at that these I regret? Guys in their picture right wait, wait, now? No. We, Pat, can I point out two things that I regret? The <laughs> what? I'm not listening to you. Two things that I regret. <laughs> Forder. Doing this podcast. <laughs> Thank you. And B, yes. letting you pick the song. Oh, come on, song. man. Man. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> you guys didn't I know don't we had know. Side. I have a, a wonderful song. introduction book. I have it written out. I practiced it. Okay. Do you want me to dim the, the music? I always want you to dim the music by about this point, but you never do. It's like that awkward hug that's I wish too I long. could take this mic off of this thing and sing about while standing. Can we hear that? I want you to show me. <laughs> and that's why it doesn't Oh, happen. yeah. I would unbutton my shirt a lot if I was at least I'm surprised it's not already. All right. What? Without further ado. <laughs> I'm going to lower the boom here. I mean, <laughs> lower the music. Peterborough, <laughs> Ontario product, correct? Indeed. Born and raised. A Canadian, I'm going to put the word legend in, and I know we throw that out, we throw that term around loosely. We do it because around we call each other legends. <laughs> right. Uh, best known as lead singer of Thousand Foot Crutch, as well as FM Static, I Am The Storm, and his first band, Oddball, which we'll talk about in a second. In my life. No, stop singing. It's there? now time. <laughs> To introduce the most popular person we've ever had on the show. That's and not true. Undoubtedly, <laughs> will spike ratings. <laughs> yes. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. If he can't, this thing's closed. <laughs> Trevor McNeven. Trevor McNeven. Everyone's fired. <laughs> Thanks for having me, How's boys. How's it going, buddy? It is well, my friends. It's I nice. might it's... just listen to this whole Foreigner album and you guys oh, talk God, the whole time. <laughs> I was going to say, throw me one headphone. Let's go. God, I'm kidding. It's nice uh, to be in this room. I got to say, you guys have done a good job. This is definitely where the magic yeah, happens. Thanks. It's, it's nostalgic. It's we, got vibe. we take uh, all of the credit for this studio. If anyone thinks otherwise, they're wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Uh, we should, should we plug the other podcast that happens in here? Is Absolutely it even not. worth it? No. no. Okay. No, uh, no need. No did you guys listen. turn the AC on? Yeah. Like, yeah it's is it hot. only a it's thousand degrees on this side of the room? Yeah, no kidding. They're like, hey, can we get this? Can we get kind of sweat box going for these guys? It's yeah. Pat's sweater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's making us all sweater. Hot. It might be the sweater. This yeah. sweater gets a lot of guff. And I'm going to tell Mike Watt and all y'all. Tell you that much. <laughs> uh, Michael Watt, a friend of the show. We've had him on previous episodes. Yeah. Okay. Trevor, let's get right into it. The numbers here. Uh, so I am a numbers Hear guy. Hear that? He just took a refreshing drink and ended ah. it with, ah. Trevor, we've discussed this on the show. So I don't we're like gonna, to talk numbers. We're, we're going to lead this <laughs> off right here. Why do you suppose man and woman and human alive, alive why, do we, why do we give the, ah, at the end of a refreshing drink? Is it a reflex, you think? It or is, is it just a, 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 a learned thing? It might be, yeah, you know, I think it's a nervous reflex. I think it's a, because I don't do that when I'm alone. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. You can't tell me you do. Yeah. It's too dramatic. <laughs> yeah. I've also heard people say it's because of the refreshment, but have you ever jumped in the lake and then you come out and you yeah. shake off the water and you go, ah. <laughs> I wish. No, I you so don't. I'm so glad we that have video right now. Hey, this isn't fair. <laughs> I just realized I'm on the end of the table. We're doing video markets we all the face We sit like I this want every week. No, we I sit, sit this way every sit week. I'm more of a side profile guy. There yeah. we go. 
I I need a better I need a different mic. I want one of those ones that hang from the ceiling. Cody, can you get us one of those? This is not comfortable. Look at this. <laughs> Something with talons. <laughs> I'm I'm super, okay. So we don't know the history of the, ah, but we are sure you don't do it on your own. That is positive. In the presence of strangers, would you let out the? Ah? I guess it depends, wouldn't it? I'm comfortable in my own skin. All yeah, right. you know. All right. I think yeah, I, would. I think I would too. I, I've been doing it this whole time. Uh, the question was only really for Trevor. <laughs> so, we didn't ask you. Go on with your uh, pre-scripted nonsense. Um, <laughs> okay, so. Uh, the numbers are staggering, and they're really fun. And people who know Thousand Foot Crutch or anything, you don't know the numbers, though. I guarantee you don't know. Uh, I'm disengaged with both of you right now. I'm just I know. Focused, You're taking... hyper-focused on the camera. What you don't understand <laughs> is there's no film in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so everything being recorded today Pat's is putting actually... putting the vibe out. Yeah, yeah, putting yeah, the vibe yeah. out. Yeah. Um, I think all of us should just sit in a straight line and have the most, <laughs> like, it's like sitting at the bar. Except every once in a while, when I ask Trevor a question, I got to lean way back and look at him and get him to lean back that way, too, and be like, hey, Trev, uh, so what do you think of Mark Million? Oh, not much? Oh, yes, me either. That type of thing. When was the last time <laughs> Trevor McNeven was at the bar? At the bar. Man. Like, like it's getting, been, his, been a getting while. his real getting his lawyers uh, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, what <laughs> bar are we never... referring to? Yeah. At the bar, man. I don't those were younger years. Younger I gotta years. Say, you know? Nineteen ninety seven. A young Trevor McNeven would have been at the bar, yes or no? Club vibe. Club vibe. All right. I used to DJ at Woody Hooks every Thursday night. No Woody kidding. Hooks. Woody Hooks. Boom. Jeepers. What were, those, what were those pictures? Like six bucks? Yeah, they had some, some pretty was, nasty yeah. stuff going some, on there. Oh like, my God. They put a, a wristband on, closed. drink till you no, have to go yeah. pee. No <laughs> Remember kidding. that? Uh, it got grief. It got messy. It's kind of good they made rules about that type of thing. I kind of stayed in my DJ booth. Yeah. yeah, yeah good yeah, for yeah. you. It's all about music. What kind of new tunes were you spinning at that uh, day and age? It was a blast, man. I've, I've kind of DJed my whole life. I was that kid who was always making mixtapes for everybody and just yes. love that stuff. So it was, this was just a, an opportunity to get paid to do it, man. So Cool. Yeah, it was great. We th It was Thursday nights, and it kind of like somehow became the hot spot in, in the town for a bit. And yeah, it's in the yeah. North End, that. which is weird. Yeah, it's North like End, total weird, destination. But it, yeah, it was rammed, man. It was good. We I would crank, I don't know. Lots of hip hop, R and B, throw in some classic rock, and yes. mix it up. You know, you gotta ask Mark. Mark fancies himself a '90s uh, hip hop rap guy. Come no, Mark. On. I do. I do enjoy it. Yes, from time to time. That might be a separate episode. That yeah. is. That is episode two. Um, Woody Hooks. Wow, I didn't expect Woody Hooks. Yeah, yeah. that was a weird That'll spot, though. Like it was. There was so many different. I don't know. Like so many different restaurants, all within like. A yeah. two-year period, right? It was Ponderosa forever, and then Woody Hooks, and it was the line dancing that. place. And uh, anyways, uh, 1997, you find your voice as the lead singer, co-founder or founder of, owner of, whatever self-important title you want to put on it, Trevor. It's okay. <laughs> we don't I let don't the facts get in the way. Yeah, so you let me know what you want to call it. But Thousand Foot Crutch is born. Yeah. Was that then? What came first, DJ and I then? Did. Yeah, DJ. You were was a dancer for Millie Vanilli or somebody like that. <laughs> Interpretive dance, still yeah. very busy in that world. Yes. In that space. No, yeah, no, honestly, I did. I know, I knew from about eight years old, man. It was one of those things. I just knew that's what I was going to do. I remember telling my parents, like, FYI, I'm not going to college. I'm gonna no way. I'm going to play music. I don't know anyone in music. I have a million <laughs> questions. I have no idea how to do this, but just felt called to that, man. And uh, it's like it chose me. That's what it felt like. So, I, yeah, I was DJing. Just, we used to throw house parties and charge at the door. I was DJing at those, just music. Cool. We used to, me and uh, a bunch of buddies, a couple of the dudes, uh, Neil Sanderson, who's with Three Days Grace, and just some other buds that we met working at Shemong Road McDonald's, man. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. Well, no way. Well, dude, coming up, think about it. Like, coming up as a musician in this town, well, or in any town, especially a small town, you're like, in order to be able to take shows last minute, or have practices with people's revolving schedules, you had to work at a place that was like, hey, can we switch shifts? You know, it had yeah. to be one of those places. And so yeah. I'm, I'm talking like high school, but it was, yeah. so Mc, Mickey D's was perfect, dog. We that, That's what paid for my oddball record, all yeah. those shifts. No way. No um, kidding. What but, was your first record? Was it on your own or with the band? Uh, yeah, it was always on my own, man. I did a tape. Uh-oh. Tapes. <laughs> Remember yeah. those? Mark wants to bring those back. Freaking tapes, I have the Memorex and Max L and oh. all of them big time. Come on. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I was 13 and I did a tape. Uh, it was called Da Boogie Man. Da Boogie Man. <laughs> With the DA, kids. And uh, it was like super tongue twistery hip hop, like really quick stuff. I was just consumed by this music. It grabbed me and I would sit in my room with two record players and vinyl and a sampler, which I just like saved up forever for. And I always sang and I always loved rock growing up here with the wolf was an influence. And I, I was the one kid in our town I felt like at the time that was consumed by hip hop. Yeah. And so I just used to sit there with headphones on and just study, man. To me, that was my university. I would spend like thousands of hours doing that. And my parents, uh, we started going to church when we were eight. Yep. And well, we started going to church before that, but, um, we became born again Christians when we were eight. And so at that point in time, they didn't want me to listen to a bunch of the music that I wanted to listen to. And, and sure. at the time, Christian music w wasn't uh, an equivalent by any man, yeah. in, in my opinion, as a music fan. And so yeah. I used to keep my tapes in this Ziploc bag in the bush in the front yard. And every day on the way to the bus, I'd be like, what up? Yeah. Put on my old, remember those Sony sports Walkmans? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was 100%. just like a deal. So yeah, that's, uh, and then, I mean, something to mention, when I think back to my childhood when it comes to music and just how ironic this journey has taken us into the world of where TFK is kind of more so known, probably more in the US than Canada, but like uh, across North America as being like a, an arena sports type band, that kind of music, it's kind of my guilty pleasure. And, yeah. and I didn't think about it for a long time, but then I look back and I spent, it's just so funny how things work, dude, but I, I spent most of my life, I played hockey till about 10 but I, I come from a big hockey family. Yeah. So I spent most of my life in a hockey rink, but with headphones on, mm -hmm. like listening to music while watching the sport happen, right? And it just never crossed my mind until way later in life. I was like, I shouldn't be the one playing like an NHL arena. Like, why aren't my brothers here? This is just weird, right? <laughs> and, but it was such a blessing, man. And, and it really did. I think it really did kind of help mold just that DNA or melting pot of what, what comes out of you musically, you know, and pours into what you do. If I was to check on Spotify for Da Boogie Man, do I, I don't find that? Is this uh, this is tucked away in the in the McNeven? Uh, Maybe possibly if somebody got crafty YouTube, but is yeah, that I don't right? know, bro. no there was, way. There was a five hundred tapes. Five hundred tapes. Five hundred tapes sold out. Yeah. <laughs> no, did you kidding. sell all five hundred? Yeah, you know what I actually did, man. Back then, that's wow. awesome. So and, as the thirteen in hip hop, like. So 13, we're talking the early 90s? I was hustling, Pat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would have been early 90s, or were you later than that? Ah, uh, that would have been, let me think. Well, I, I did Oddball when I was ni in 96 and released it. So that would have been, geez, I don't know, man. Yeah, well, I guess 93. Like, whatever the influence was. So you had either hip-hop and, like... I, I, I guess it depends on what your you know what your classification of hip hop is or who the artist that you're listening to, sure. but like a very um, a very thug influence, like a, you know a very uh, a lot of swearing. You certainly wouldn't have played it in front of your mom. Like I, I, same sort of idea. I never played that stuff with my parents around. Right. Um, still wouldn't. No, no, <laughs> no. yeah, no, no it's still uncomfortable. There's no growing appreciation there, right? <laughs> yeah. But. What was it? Was it something about, um, like for them, obviously their motivation was what they saw, right. you know, the lifestyle where they lived right. and these sorts of things. So um, obviously much different here, but how did you, did you have the influence to make the music and how, how did you have the influence to make the music but keep it clean? Um, I mean, for me, that was always my heart, man. I, uh, I've always given God the, all the glory for everything that's happened in our career and I felt called to it from a young age and I've just been walking towards it ever since, you know? And so it's something that to me, you know, Christianity isn't my name tag or like a badge we wear, you know, right. it's, it's a lifestyle. It's who we are as people. And yeah. so, um, yeah, so for me, my faith's been a big part of that and my guys and, and our family and just, so it's, it's, it's more out of the heart of just wanting to communicate, I think, with our audience in a way that's real and raw and honest. And um, I never felt like as, w with that being my faith, I never really felt like other Christian music spoke to me. Mm. It just, it didn't seem like real life. Like no one was talking about real things. You know, yeah, it was right. like this shiny, happy world. And, and I get the encouragement piece of that, right? We, yeah. all, we all need it, but um, it just didn't speak to me, man. Yeah. And so that's and it's evolved drastically. Since it has. Then. No kidding. Like, Absolutely. Drastically. So has. doing a lot of the research for this, uh, I I never listened to Christian rock. Yeah. Like uh, Christian sure. music, really. Um, well, and to be fair, just real quick, we our hearts were always to make music for everyone. 
It was uh, never, we were never setting out to be, a, we're going to make Christian music. Right. We are Christians making music, and it's right. going to be true to our heart, you know? So it was right. always making, for us, it was always making music for everyone. Yeah. I, I always equated, did you ever listen to it when you were younger? Yeah, like Isaac Teeple. Oh, right, Remember yes. Remember Carl? Yeah, yeah, Carl, that's right. Carl yeah. selling Christian music yeah. back when we were in high school. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would have known all sorts of it from back then. So uh, for me, it always stood to be, um, like, certainly anything that I've listened to from you, Trevor, I I don't remember anything like that. Nothing. Nothing like that. But, like, I would equate Nothing it with, that bad. You know, <laughs> I, like, I would equate it with Robert Schuller's Power Hour. Right, like you wow. get up there at Dang. 10 a.m. or whatever, because I'm waiting for sure. NFL prime time to come on. Of course, and I've got to I've got to watch Robert Schuler. Like <laughs> it's no, annoying guy. they got like he's the, he's yeah. on there, he's delivering it from the pulpit, whatever, and then they play a couple of songs and like speed this up. Like I got to get to Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, we'll be yeah. doing the pre-show. Like yeah, I got to get to. I got to find out the lines, the trends. Yeah. Um, I just I find that interesting that hip hop was what well, was it for you those tapes who's yeah. on those tapes in the bag dude there's still it's still some of my favorite hip hop man yeah. it's it's a tribe called quest public yeah. enemy run dmc cool mo d um gangstar uh all the early early hip hop stuff that you yeah. know mob deep all of that stuff which is so funny cuz on on a faith level we, we're not in we're not representing the same thing but music yeah. is music right and right. we our heart is, and I believe we all should be, is to love people for who they are and what they believe, right? And yeah. regardless of what you what you believe, and so that's the stance we've always taken in any situation, whether we're opening for the Foo Fighters or whether we're playing with like the Newsboys or whoever, you know, like. Yeah. And so it's been a really, really cool journey that way. But yeah, so hip hop, though, man, it it cons- the best word I can use is consumed. I was like, yeah. I had like, I've always had a job since like forever ago, and I had about three paper routes, and I used to. That's when I, that was my homework time. And I would do it before school, and I would just listen to this stuff. And I, it was so consumed by it. I like, I walk into trees on people's front lawns and like <laughs> fall over with my headphones on a crap. I got hit by a car once because I was so consumed by it. I was just walking and just like, bam, <laughs> over the hood. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank God that worked out. But so yeah, it was. It really consumed me. And I, and there wasn't really anyone else around here that I could like relate to on that level. Yeah. I was definitely. I will admit it. I was totally the kid, like rocking exhaust jeans and just like <laughs> full blown stitches in the mall. Like yeah. people yeah. are just like, "All right, man, this is a phase." But it was. It's it's always been part. So of So you DNA. were you were offending grandmothers at Lansdowne Place Mall, <laughs> but you were always like, "Please and thank you." I'll <laughs> yeah. hold the door for you, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I look like I guess I, so. I look like I'm hood, but I'm not. <laughs> not. I'm a really nice guy. <laughs> well, I always knew where I came from, yeah, so I sorry. I've never tried to be something I'm not. That was just. You know, what, what are you listening for in music? Like, if you had an ear for it, or is it trained, or is it something that's a gift? Or when you're listening to hip hop, what are you listening to that you like? Is it lyrics? Is it the beat? Is is it the message they're sending? I think it's a bit of everything, man. It's it can be cadence, you know, it can be patterns, and like a, on a rhyme level, someone like Eminem is really respected for his ability to make anything rhyme and his crazy patterns. He's almost drumming vocally, like yeah. Does it. And I think it just it depends. But you you identify and you appreciate something that's speaking to you in that music. And I've, I've this fascinates me. I could talk about this forever, and obviously we won't right now. But I something on a music mentorship level, I've started doing more of that and developing cool. new artists. And just it's it's a way for me to be able to kind of give back. And just yeah. I've been that small town kid who had a million questions, you know, and had no one to ask. So I've been trying to spend more time in that space. And man, what fascinates me, and to, to me personally, this is proof that God created music. And to each his own on that, but I just—it's the only thing in our lifetime that can like speak to your soul, yeah. in my mm-hmm. opinion. And it really does. It's the closest thing we have to a time machine. Like, yeah. it, you can hear a song from when you're growing up or from two weeks ago, and it can take you back to a taste, a smell, anything. Yeah. In an instant. It's a memory locker. Yeah, it is. you're right. Yeah, and it's the I soundtrack never to our of lives. It like that. And there's nothing else that can do that. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. And that is cool about, and and that's maybe the reason why those things still. Uh, it, it is one of those art forms that I guess it, it is almost timeless. Like if I do, if I pick up, you know, that tape from, you know, or I see the tape when I'm out or that I had when I was a kid. Right. And I think, man, like that, I love that. Like how many hours did you spend burning yeah. on, on those things that it was. Yeah, I, there's times when I'm thinking, man, I want to remember what it's like to be a kid. 
And now that you've said it that way, I'm thinking I'll just listen to like Corey Hart, Never Surrender, <laughs> yes. pop it in, because yes. my dad Boy in the box. went to Winnipeg, went to Winnipeg on a cur- for a curling bond spiel, came back with that album as a surprise for me, Boom. and I just listened to it like mad. Now I can put Sick. it on and be yeah. like drive and think of my dad, think about yeah. my mom's reaction totally. was she hated yeah. Corey Hart, couldn't <laughs> yeah. stand him, right. yeah. But I wanted his haircut. You're right, 100%. That's it just true. takes you right back. So in in unlocking those sorts of memories or those sorts of things, I've read a little bit about um, you writing music. <coughs> yeah. And not necessarily even for yourself, no, but yeah. for other artists or co-writing it with other artists. And so what, what, is that, what does that look like? Somebody... Somebody that you've met, obviously, or they've, they've been inspired by your music or by, you know, the writing or whatever, to say, I want you to be involved here. Right. But I think it was probably the oddball record for me, honestly. So I was 16. I put out this record that was like 27 tracks, like way too many songs. I did it at Barry Haggerty's <laughs> here yeah. in Peterborough. Yeah, that's awesome. And paid for it with McDonald's money. And the first half was totally like an eclectic bunch of... It was, a, it was like me just... <laughs> putting my musical, well, this is some stuff I like, you know? And, and it was all over the place. It was a mixtape. And so the first half was rock. There was literally like an applaud in the middle, like, and it, like an interlude, and then it went to all, all awesome. hip hop. It was all hip hop. That is awesome. And I made the hip hop stuff production wise. Matt Hart from Peterborough from the North End produced all the hip hop stuff and we had a blast. But that was when I realized that I really love songwriting. I was like, Mm. this is a mixtape of like, there's folk, there's rock, there's pop rock, there's hip hop, there's like somewhere in between, there's like hard rock. And I remember thinking like, I really enjoy writing all this stuff, but also learning along the way that you can't, you know, you can't have all of that as one entity. It's just not gonna work. Like, you know, you you just think about your favorite bands. You don't want it to be one dimensional. You want it to take you on a journey, but also, you know, you can't be like everything to everyone on it as a band. So yeah. That's when I started to realize that, and I started to, from a young age, just kind of uh, work on songwriting for other bands, man. And it, it's become a full-time thing for me the last 20 years, man, across genres and borders, and uh, it's been a blessing. So yeah, sometimes I'm like FaceTiming, writing with people in Vancouver. Sometimes, a lot of times, they'll come into my studio and fly in, and from rock to pop, hip hop, whatever, country. Cool. And, yeah, I, I love it. Man. I would I like you it. to make just a, like a release once album, maybe let's say 10 songs or 12, but or 27 it, at, <laughs> at six at six it, you have to incorporate clapping and then it goes to a whole different genre just do it just do it release it and see what happens and then this podcast plays yeah <laughs> not a bad idea a third one yeah there'd be three periods uh, i like it somebody that you you know trevor certainly uh isaac teeple that one yeah. or two claps uh, if you ever watch Isaac dance, next time you're uh, out somewhere, that's we haven't how danced he, much. That's yeah. how he kicks he off incorpor- every single he dance. Step. Every dance. I wish we have video. Yeah, we do. It's like this. He starts off like this. Just stop clapper. He he okay. does every time. But like as soon it's as like he gets to the floor, maybe he's getting his beat. I don't yeah. know. It sets his pace. Right. He's always holding the drink here, so it's just one arm. Going yeah. Like Tell me you're getting this. This is yeah. good. This is good. <laughs> that's gold. <laughs> But that's I what wish he does. all of you were here. Yeah. He gets out onto the floor and no tile gets cut until he claps the hands. Yeah, maybe he's and just he's trying in. to find his beat, his rhythm of sorts. It's his icebreaker. Yeah. It may be. It's the way that the kid is. Um, along the way, okay, so obviously like uh, all the albums and all the downloads and all sure. of these things, and we're talking hundreds of thousands and millions of these things. There are some things that I thought were cooler than others. Sure. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> uh, June 18th, 2016 You have yourself a week here And we're going to tell the story here in a second But this would be in and around June 18th, 2016 Do you know this date? I do Or in and around this date What does yeah. it mean to you? I was in college I needed the money <laughs> I'm joking. Need, In um, 2016 you were getting um, well <laughs> well you hit one, one Friday night Jokes, jokes, jokes <laughs> um, That would have been I believe the release date of the Exhale album No? Correct. So here's the week that Trevor has this week. I don't know that I win points for knowing my album release date. <laughs> uh, TFK lead singer, songwriter, and guitarist Trevor McNeven has a lot to celebrate this week. In addition to already hitting number one on iTunes Rock Top Albums Chart in the U.S. with top five overall album chart placement in Canada, Russia, Australia, Finland, and today's release date of Exhale, which is right, 
Uh, McNeven is also the proud dad of a new baby girl, just in time for Father's Day weekend. True story. That part, I'll, I'll admit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're having a week at that point, yeah. right? It's going pretty good. <laughs> it was insane. In the <laughs> midst, no kidding. Yeah. In the midst of the success of the new album from TFK and the new baby, uh, McNeven's songwriting and vocal talent is also getting time on the big screen as he co wrote and performed the end credits theme song for the number one box office movie of the week. Holy cow. Teenage I've known you Mutant this long. Ninja- I didn't know this. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> out of what the I mean shadows. Hi. <laughs> uh, dude, you know That's what? That's a week. No? Okay. Yeah, you, you did all right? That was a week. That was a real week. Uh, hey, silly question. I'm going to just, you can yeah. go back just one sec. A movie ending that you wrote, you wrote the music for the credits? End credits, yeah. End credits. Every t- Nah, I don't even know if I'm allowed to ask you that. I'm very curious about if Pat that wants movie- to know about the mailbox money. <laughs> yeah. Like when that hits the old Netflix, <laughs> Trevor's getting that eight cents like, on every that, download. Hey, of Netflix. here's a one time <laughs> fee, my friend. Or is that a every time Pat goes on and throws it? A, a digital every time spell we hit on, out of the shadows, Trevor, you're getting Trevor paid. eats another steak. How does that, <laughs> How does that work? All right. Good. I do another interview. Yeah. There we have it. Uh, you know what? Uh, truthfully, it's that's a whole space that I love—the film and TV world with music cool. and the synergy. Of that, but it's it can work either way, man. Yeah, sometimes yeah, okay. it's a one-off. It, it depends on the studio. Yeah. Sometimes it's a residual. It just depends yeah, on what you, they agree upon. You're gonna want to work out a residual after being on the podcast <laughs> here. Oh, <laughs> so are we? So, uh, legal team, you're behind the cameras there. Get writing. I have legal papers waiting <laughs> outside. Right yeah. outside. Not the first. One step ahead of you, bud. Yeah. Not the first movie though. That no. featured Trevor McNeil. Is that right? Song work, correct. I You're, don't even know you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> a movie that Who featured <laughs> uh, Rene Russo and Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid. Is Dennis Quaid not a, a man of all movies? Is that he one of those he actors really who's been he in really all is. sorts of films? He is. There, there was a local band uh, who's done really well, and they're like little bros to me. They're awesome dudes, but uh, called Hawk Nelson. Yes. Yeah. That um, I helped develop and kind of get a record deal, and we wrote the first three records together, and yep. they're amazing. But uh, yeah, that was an opportunity that came to us when I was making our Art of Breaking record with Arnold Lanny in Toronto and got a call and said, hey, from the director who did Scooby-Doo. And he said, we have this movie and we want to know if you can write this song uh, for with this band, And but we need it done in 24 hours. And I was cool. in the studio all day myself. And it, well, honestly, with film and TV, this is how it works. Yeah, mm. you're, on really? their, you're on their schedule. Like it's So I literally left a full day of studio at Arnold Landy's in Toronto. They met me, we drove to our condo at the time in Hamilton, we just got married. Uh, I had wrote most of the song in my head on the drive back to Hamilton. We got there. <laughs> We, we, you know, worked through the rest of it together, had to send them a demo. He loved it. He called me and said, I have three things I want you to say. This was cool for me. I love this as a songwriter. He's like, I wanted to mention like something about all night, something about a party in the living room and like one other thing. I don't remember. So we did that, sent it to him. They loved it. And then we had to fly to Seattle the same night, record the song. And then literally we're on our way to Hollywood for them to perform it in the movie, in the, in this like party in that living room. Right. So it was just like what a whir- whirlwind. Of, that's yeah. how it works, man. It's just yeah, like. I, 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 I yeah. read that about that they had performed it in the living room. Like, how do you how do you write it without getting a sense or you know of what the the spirit of the movie is or what it's about? Like, did you have any idea it's a movie about them with eighteen kids? No idea. I'd never right. seen the original, so right. <laughs> so you're right. It's a remake, right? This is a yep. 1968. Yep. Yeah, remake. No, no idea, man. They how, were just like, we need a party song. I was like, I can okay. do that. Do you forget what? Like, see, to me, if I'm driving around and th- I think, man, that would be a good song, about a split second afterwards, I'm like, what was I thinking about there two seconds ago? <laughs> yeah. Can you, you said you wrote half the song on the drive. Do you remember all the words that you did just in that couple of hours? Or is it just like, or do you break it into t- things that, oh, that would be good, I maybe I'll add this in this part and try right. to put it all together? I think it was the guitar riff and the chorus. Okay. In my mind at the time. And then Dan Biro, who moved back from Nashville, he's a uh, Barry kid, but now lives, he's lived in Peterborough for like a decade. Yeah. Awesome, awesome dude. You guys should talk to him. He's great. But okay. he, uh, he's in Hawk Nelson to oh, this no day. Way. And um, yeah, he lives here now. And so him and I wrote it at the apartment or at my condo and just, yeah, went from wow. there. It happened quick, man. It was like, that's how it works. I that. always find that so fascinating when I, when you listen to any song, but sometimes I find myself thinking about it 
how did you come up with it? Yeah. Right? Like, you, you, because that's how these things come together, right? It's not necessarily the words so much. Well, it is, obviously, but to get the beat and how many, you know, what you want the song to be. You want it to right. be fast. You want it to be slowed down. You want it to be, you know, I find that to be fascinating. I don't understand how, I guess it's like anything though. It you is, know, some people is. can, some people can draw, some people can sing, some people can write, some people. I'm not good at selling houses. Yeah. yeah so. well, neither are we. So yeah. that's, why we, that's why you're on. That's why you're on. We need that mailbox money. Yeah. <laughs> Do you amazing. think of the music first before the words? Always? No, there's never an always. Oh, okay. Mm. Always different, man. I, my, so my voice memo or voice recorder has just been my best friend since like a very young age. Okay. And it's funny to look back at like the change in those. It used to be like a mini disc player or like, a, yeah. I remember going into Radio Shack once because I bought something. There was a voice memo. I had like 10,000 ideas on it, literally like, and it busted. Oh. And I went in there and was like, dude, you don't understand. Like, I need this fixed. Like, you need the glasses on your face. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, we have to work this out. Yeah. It, was just, it was just this hilarious. But from that point on, I just always made sure I had. So you always have it on you. And you look like the crazy guy on the airplane that's like, just doesn't care who hears them. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I got to go to the laboratory and just bust this out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the wait. But yeah, it happens all different ways, man. It was the same. You mentioned the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing, which was like, Super cool for me growing up playing the Nintendo game and like yeah. uh, just growing up on that, right? It was awesome. So it was such an honor to be asked to do that. But no it, kidding. It, it happened the same way. We were in, long story short, we were in New York City doing press with Sirius XM for the, for the XL record to do live acoustic and stuff. And I got a call that first night and I do the press for the band. So it was just very hectic schedule from my buddy Phil X. And he's uh, also a Canadian who plays with Bon Jovi Live. And he, uh, he said, man, um, would you be into doing this? But they need it tomorrow. And I didn't have any of my gear with me. So I ran to Guitar Center in between in, uh, interviews, bought the stuff I needed, went back to the hotel room and built this vocal booth out of like pillows and comforters and stuff, recorded it. And then we, I was FaceTiming with the director going back and forth. And then we, we ended up getting it done, but it was like barely. No kidding. It's one of those eh? things where you're like, how did we live through this? Like, who, <laughs> who does this? <laughs> what, going, a, what a weird life. To going from <laughs> major motion pictures to something maybe a little bit smaller, but just as cool. Uh, a Mike Fisher goal song. <laughs> now I can't, I, yeah. I can't find any audio of it. Oh, I got some for so you. Pat has some. You might know somebody who has it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I also, and you have to give credit to the originator and I apologize if you're not, but did you also write a second goal scoring song for another, uh, I don't want to say Mike's a wannabe author player because he was great like he played a thousand <laughs> games and but for another guy like if edit I, if I, no 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 don't edit that it's okay yeah. uh, he'll punch me out after when he comes on take me out of the screen for that part and, yeah. uh, if i play this one just a six second excerpt could you t this was one that according to this you wrote for pat oh, uh, just just hang on a second uh, oh wait wait no 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 okay Pat's had so many theme songs over he the years. So, yeah, it's I hard mean, to know which one you, could it be. Well, yeah. this is his goal song or scoring for those at home. You can. Uh, <laughs> Are you still talking about hockey? I don't know. That's, that's it. Let me play. Uh, wait. A Let me second. play it one more time. Let me play one more time for those at you home. Are such Just an listen idiot. here, Pat's scoring song. This is beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> you are yeah. such an idiot. That is accurate. That's your career's. <laughs> Okay, Trev, you didn't write that one, though. That sounds like the soundtrack to just something going down the drain. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Bob Barker written all over. Okay, uh, <laughs> continuing on, big screen. Okay, now you're in, obviously, goal-scoring songs. That was all NHL. my... NHL. That was N all my... NHL 2010 and 2013. Yeah. That was super cool. Do you know that what, of all the cool. things, I always knew you were out go gallivanting around, <laughs> singing in front of thousands of people. But for me, NHL guy, forever in my life, when I heard you on there, I was like, I know that guy. I, <laughs> I feel like those were our, our proudest Canadian moments. Yeah, We're like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that was a huge blessing, dude. Super cool. I mean, just we, we were fortunate enough to be on quite a few video games through the years with TFK yep. and FM Static. and But that was like. As a Canadian, I mean, it just doesn't get better. Yeah, you know, no kidding. We so you were on multiple video games? Yeah, we had a, a couple of the RBI baseball games and a bunch of no. NBA games. No um, way. Yeah, it was. we were fortunate. You know, the sports world just gravitated 
it worked well together. Yeah, it was like cool. The, the TFK, I guess my guilty pleasure in that kind of anthemic hard rock worked well with like NASCAR and ESPN and UFC and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. through the years, the relationship, it built organically with Rock Fist is where it started. We had this song called Rock Fist. Yeah. And long story short, I had written it to be a theme song for The Rock, The Wrestler. Oh, no way. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't supposed to go on our, ra- our album, and we had an agreement with the WWF at the time. Yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. Might have been E. But anyways, it was, and then two weeks later, he uh, was like, I'm going to be an actor. Bam. Just pe- just retired. So oh. we, that label was like, you have to put this on the album. And it was never supposed to be. But through that, anyways, it just, that started to open up a bunch of kind of pro sports doors right. for the band. And it was that very organic, awesome. man. Is years, most though. recently the 2018 WWE do I read that properly? A, th- a different kind of dynamite? Yeah. This is the lead song for a pay-per-view event that they did at the end of last year. They did, man. Yeah, they were good to us. Big time. How many... How many Rock li- Fist would have probably been on Jock Jams 2018 if there ever was one. <laughs> Why don't you have a Rock Jock Rock em, em. Yeah. Can we do a Trevor, uh, like, Jock Jams, like, bring it back? Yeah. Sounds well, like you have more than enough material here. <laughs> well, that was the irony. Is I was, like, the unjockiest person yeah. in my family and yet made total Jock Jams. Like, yeah. Just, just yeah. Like, anybody else catch that? Pat completely cutting Trevor right down. Trevor says, uh, if we can roll back the tape here. Oh, oh, I'm the I most unathletic, like the most the unathletic guy ever. And Pat, yeah. yeah. You were. Oh, okay. Like okay. No, of course you didn't. You're well, such a donkey. Why do you say donkey like that to me? That hurts my feelings. <laughs> it was a term of endearment. It, it yes. really wasn't, and I know that. Uh, I've listened to some of the hip hop. Uh, oh, the I am the storm stuff. I am the storm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is. <laughs> This is called These Lines. Tell me when Trevor cuts in here. (laughs) That's my wife. So it starts out a little bit. It's chill. Yeah. It's chill. And then what are we inside of six seconds here? It's about to get intense. Yeah. <laughs> That's fast. Right? My 13 year old self coming back out. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that- this, this project's been so fun. I. I, so to talk I Am The Storm, because um, that's, that's been my world, you know, this last season, we took uh, our first ever break as TFK off the road in like over 20 years, uh, a couple years ago, and it's been awesome. We really felt like it, it was time. We'd never taken a break, and yeah. everybody's got families now, and so it's been awesome, such a blessing to the fans. But I got really inspired in that time to do this project, and basically it started out as, a, as more of a hip-hop thing and eclectic, I would say. And it's become, I think the vision of it is, is changed. It just, it just broadened to be this really this melting pot of music I love creating. Mm. And so I'm almost done the new record. It's called Havoc, and I'm really excited about it. Um, have some fun friends on this. And it's not, it's not hip-hop. It's not just hip-hop. It's like, there's, man, it's, it bleeds into rock, hip-hop, funk. It's all over the place. Um, but it's just me. That's it's, awesome. It's been so fun, dude. And uh, yeah, so in the process of doing the official launch for that uh, in the next year and it's cool. tba on the date but yeah still wrapping everything up but it's gonna be really fun man i'm having I'm making the most music of my life right now and just loving it and is that considered a second album then like just the- theoretically we on the first one well without going into it it just we i kind of had to switch teams after the first release just realizing you know it just wasn't the right setup for this for yeah. the first record it was called fight music volume one and i love it and i'm excited for people to hear it i am so but this moving forward will be the official launch of this project and then you know, hopefully people will be, will, it'll drive them back to check that out as well. And, yeah. and there's a bunch of remixes coming out for that album, 
that I'm crazy excited about. Speaking of film and TV, it's like very film and TV based. No way. I Am the Storm can be a, quote, statement that we could all use and an antidote to speak to our own mountains, obstacles, fears, addictions, hurts, pains, and rejections. It's more about knowing that when you're in the center or eye of your storm, there's a complete peace and tranquility as you face all the conditions that storms tend to bring and overwhelm in your life. That sure. comes. That didn't come from nothing. That didn't come from nowhere. No. No, right? absolutely. That's didn't. come from yeah. somewhere. For sure. So that's obviously that's a very personal yeah. part of it. Whatever whatever motivation was used to uh, yeah. write that. Um, well, I think that was my heart, honestly, with this name because it's a, it's an odd name. It's just like a statement, right? But yeah. I mean, to me, it was like it felt. I spent about. And a year, probably, while I was working on music, thinking about what's the right name for this. And I kind of wanted it to have a band name as opposed to, I'm not going to, I'm like, come on, dude, I'm not going to pull up some rap name. It's just not me. <laughs> so it, uh, but this really spoke to me. And it came from that, that kind of quote that you hear that said, you know, the devil whispered in my ear, you're not strong enough to withstand the storm. And today I whispered in the devil's ear, like, I am the storm. <laughs> like, awesome. Take that. And so that's, that was the heart of it. And I wanted, I just felt like it could resonate with our existing audience globally that just is, you know, just going through the things that we do, whether it's anxiety, whether it's mental health, whether it's addictions or just, just life stuff, man, life is hard or parents divorcing or just life stuff that, that you don't see coming that becomes an obstacle, you know, or becomes something that can be hard to walk through. And I wanted this to be almost the heart was for for to encourage each of us to be able to turn around and look at that thing and be like not today man you know yeah. like we are the storm this is it and my faith is in god in that yep. situation he's the strength in my weakness that's for sure i got a lot of them but um that's the heart of it anyways yeah that's where it comes from man and um so yeah i, I think this project kind of delves all over the place on a topic level too it's probably the most raw i've ever been in music and um you know, it's to sp speaking about anxiety, I mean, that's something that I started to, for the first time in my life, uh, experience probably 2014. It's always while I'm making a record and there's a, like three or four big things going on. And at the time, um, I was writing two records for TFK, Inhale and Exhale, and uh, we were finishing our basement studio. So I was building a whole new studio, finishing the basement, and we had our first baby. And it just, it hit me while I was writing a song called I See Red that was about that, was about that feeling. And I didn't even know what anxiety was at the time. And I, I honestly, and whether this was ignorant or not, I, I think I'd always prided myself on just being like, I handle stress pretty well. It doesn't affect me. Yeah. I'm, I'm in high stress situations. That's my life. And, but it hit me, man. And it, when it hits you for real, it, it knocks you out, you know? And I didn't even know how to, I didn't know how to deal with that. So, right. It's been a process, man, but it's happened occasionally since then and something I've learned a lot more about and have a heart to talk to other friends about, you know, and the more as dudes, you know, we don't, we don't talk about that stuff a lot, yeah. right? And I find anyways, for what it's worth, the more you mention it to friends, the more you realize that, man, a, a lot of us go through stuff like right. this, that who, no matter who you are, or what you go through or, so it's been cool. It's honestly, uh, it's been a, yeah, part of the journey, man. It's all part of it, right? And I, I find that, I find that narrative <laughs> all the time, like you, and I get caught up with it and I know you do too about like we go down the rabbit hole of commentary on an article or whether it be sports or life or whatever yeah. newspaper um and people think how how can a guy like how can a guy like that have anxiety yeah how can a guy like that have sure. stress like is almost dehumanizing it from the point that mm -hmm. um you know they look at the success of somebody and they think that's not possible sure you know whereas yeah uh, at the end of the day, I mean, it's not that this is your, that's not your job. Right. You know, this isn't your employer, quote unquote, but then the anxiety is still the same. Right. You know, you're putting that out. Pat and I had this, I wouldn't say, it's certainly not on the same level, and I, I would never dream of putting it there. But how many times do we sit back and when we were early days on this podcast, listening back to it, thinking, oh my God, that was so dumb. Yeah. Sure. Oh my God. Yeah. It sounds so, but, so ridiculous. But yeah. I wouldn't even say what you said, though, honestly, because it is exactly the same. There's, I don't think there's levels to that. It's we're just going through different things in our lives, and yeah. because yeah. I do what I do doesn't make me any different than you. You know, but right? we we're, all, never, we're all people doing what we do. Right, yeah, but we had never. I had never, for myself, anyways, personally, I had yeah. never put anything out into the universe where somebody else could 
take it and rip sure. it apart and critique it yeah. enjoy yes. it love it like yeah. that, that's a real it, thing it, yeah it everybody becomes your biggest critic yeah, yeah. like sure well, well you don't do this like yeah right yeah it's true it's i true. remember mark and i did talk about that early on because we had to we sat there thinking again like our world may be smaller than others but we're sitting there thinking we got to manage what we say here because i don't want yeah. to go to someone say to me i heard it said in the podcast you're an <laughs> idiot right. I, I don't ever want to work with you or something like that so we tr- we we, Mark and I try to make light of each other and we make yeah. fun of each other. And even sometimes of in the beginning, my own mom will be like, can you take it easy on Mark? I don't know why are you and I'm like, it's like a <laughs> shtick. I'm just one doing or Cody or whoever. But, um, mm. but like Mark and I, the same thing we're listening and we're and in the beginning being like, Frig, we'd we probably, I don't know if, I think we re listened to all of them right up to like in the forties, probably for I'd sure. Say. Maybe the fifties yeah. of them yeah. just being like, uh, some of them were fun to listen back to because the guest yeah. and it's neat. I don't know if you like this happens to you where you wa- listen to it again or watch it and you're like, I remember that happening, but not it didn't happen on a roll yeah. the same way in my head as it did totally. now that I'm watching it. Yeah. Or yeah. listening to it. So for yeah, sure, it's man. it's hard when you can put things out there for people to be like, Yeah, oh these guys, so who, who do they think they are? It's vulnerable, idiots. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is, man. It is. What about playing live? Yeah. I mean, you've probably played venues that have been, you know, you can see where the exit door is and you've played oh, yeah. places where you need people to guide you in and out, like from the, yeah. to the stage from the door. Man, uh, we've, we've played every cornfield party to graduation dance to like got paid for pizza for a long time. You know, you yeah. just, you get paid by, and then through the years, yeah, we were blessed to, to kind of cross over. Well, you know, you kind of worked your way through Ontario and then uh, if you're, fortunate enough Canada and then we were fortunate enough to cross the border and at the time I was working eight hours a day on just the band like I I was so focused on getting this off the floor that I couldn't take another job once we once I felt dedicated to it McDonald's so I, was long gone yes you, and, uh, you did you turn in the gold I, card or no I try not to you just, that it's bad a, boy. It's, I know you did. you know it's a legality <laughs> I like it I felt like they owed me oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we, I, you know, you're out there hand postering every show and just uh, learning how to do what you do, really. And but then, you know, things moved on, and I met my wife her last year of high school at Adam Scott, yeah, friend of Patty's, and um, that f- she went to Guelph University for f- four years to a school again at McMaster for a year, and during that whole time, we were like 300 shows a year. We were gone, man. Crazy. We were just gone. Yeah. So it's it's all part of it. You look back, I guess, like anything in life. Sometimes you look back and you're like. How did we even live through that? Like we didn't sleep. We ate and showered at gas stations. Like <laughs> crazy. This was life. It's just right. what do you do, right? Yeah. You're in a van together with a bunch of dudes. It's, it's not normal <laughs> life by any means. Like, yeah. But, who's, but who's you love it. The best. Who's your favorite? Uh, I guess act that you never thought you'd ever have a chance to play on the same stage as. Man, there's been a few. We've been very fortunate that way. One that stands out as soon as you said that was Soundgarden. Cool. Yeah, man. No way. They've always been like top three hard rock bands in my entire life. Yeah. Dude, that's that did I, like that's, an Amber Alert. Did I just yes, win? Did I win the game? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, there is. Soundgarden was Says the trick question. There's oh. no danger to your health, but Soundgarden was the number one answer. Yes. And that. So Boom. This is a test of the system. What do I win? That was somebody's talking to us right now. So Soundgarden, what, Soundgarden yeah. would be the. Yeah, that well, they've just because we were in the. I've always loved all music, but you know, we played hard rock, rock. That's what TFK was, and so in our in our space, man, that was always one of my favorite bands to this day. And uh, yeah. so it was such an honor to get to play with those dudes and bands like The Offspring and Cake and you know, just bands we we came up on. You know, like yeah, yeah. I have one memory. Um, there was a huge festival right on the outside of Peterborough when we were growing up. Like I'm talking 25, 30 years ago, whatever. Okay. Twenty five years ago, we're not that old. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> There, but it was huge. It was it was called like Eden Fest. I feel yeah. Like. Yes. It was a one time thing. It, yeah. Right. And they had like whoever it was just like bit off way more than they could chew. They had every band we've ever heard of at this thing. It was sick. And I had tickets and I was so excited to see like Nirvana was there, Chili Peppers, Bush was just giant at the time. Yeah. Live. You know. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a cold. And um, all of that was happening. And I remember I was making the Oddball record, and I remember having to give up my tickets in order to afford my last couple sessions at Barry's to finish the record. And I'll, I'll just never wow. forget that because about five years ago, I was on stage backstage watching Bush play like together with us. And I was like, 
Oh, Freaking McDonald's, man. 16, you know, it just comes back to you. And I was like, I'm so thankful. Like, you don't take it for granted, you know? Yeah. No just, kidding. And they're great to this day, by the way. They're, like, probably better now live than they were then. No it's way. pretty eh? amazing, yeah. Wow. But just one of those moments, you know? Yeah, it's nostalgic for, sure. for me. Do some bands get better with age, you think? Because I think if, they can. Yeah. I think the tough part is I, I'm just, like, as someone, as a fan, as very few bands have the opportunity to I'm at, like age gracefully like sure. some of the ones, especially in rock. Yeah. yeah. Like some of them, <laughs> it's like, um, like, man, I know may, maybe this is the identity of you guys, but maybe you should all just been like, okay, let's cut it here. <laughs> totally. People are going to love us forever. And like <laughs> my dad talks about the Beatles saying like they, to him, they were, they were four guys meant to be. Yeah. And after they weren't together, they just weren't that what it wasn't they sure. weren't the same alone as they were together sure even if they made great stuff and people loved them but at the same time he always said but they'll live forever now because they yeah. never had that chance for people to be like grow up with them and you love them if you grow up with them but then yeah. your kids are like oh man like the, yeah the, I, they i don't know almost lose their i mean the rolling stones i think have managed to keep an audience yeah. for a long time alice and not cooper. just people yeah. yeah alice cooper yeah some of those guys but then there's some that are like it's, I, I don't know. It's like you reach a peak and then maybe yeah. you should just be like, okay, all right, we did it. <laughs> and I'm not when it's time. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I, I'm not Hang up the skates. I'm, boys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to go yeah. backwards here. But that's sure. gotta be, that's sure. gotta be a hard thing. Yeah. You know, like, in oh, anything, like yeah. you see athletes all the time that hang on and some guys that, you know, from a fan standpoint, they retire too early. Like yeah. you still have some gas in the tank for but, sure, man. Um, well, I think a band is such a unique animal and it's not like any other business I've ever seen. Yeah. It's there's so many gray areas on roles and all that stuff. And yeah, just, it's just not like you don't live with your staff and or your your partner. Right. So, you know, you just it's, it's a weird thing. So you you come up in that and there's a lot of dynamics and every, everyone's a different animal. Like you, there's no blanket statement, I think, for yeah. bands or artists. But um, so bands break up for a lot of the same reasons. Right. You know? sure. Just but at the end of the day, you see guys like the Stones, who, in my opinion, it's almost I mean, they've been obviously very blessed. I'm not forget the details of this parallel, but. I feel like knowing people like that who've done it forever, it's no different than serving life in prison, but then getting out early and you don't know how to live. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. That's that's where that's your habitat, man. Yeah. You don't and know how right. to go to Walmart and buy groceries. You've never done it. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah, when right. You, it's like, huh, no, let's just go back on the road. That's where I feel like me. You know? Right, yeah. When um, you say that, two two bands come to mind and one I we've all been privileged, and everybody in the room's been privileged to to have watched this. Um the way that the tragically hip had mm. kind of their big time, you know, that they called their own shot there. Right, I right. mean, obviously Gord being sick was, um, that was something, but it, it, it could have just very easily just, um, you know, pulled yeah. back and say, we're not going to do the 10 city tour or whatever it was. And, yeah. and, uh, we're not going to give you this and we won't give you the, the biopic at the end. And, um, that was special. But to call their own shot. Like, I've always yeah. felt that from the CBC, this should have been something that it should have been celebrated every year. Right. You know, and, and have those sort of the outdoor venues and people coming together and watching this thing and understanding that, you know, a couple months later you learn to, to find out that he passes away. But mm -hmm. the, how special it was that, you know, that they got to call their own shot. So you saying that about, you know, the other band members and Queen. Oh, would man. be the other one where yeah. these guys are bigger than life in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, uh, and and Mercury dies, and yeah, it, it would be. It would be so strange. Like, well, that's I've thought the about life it. you've known. I've thought about it too. Like, getting older is a kind of a neat thing. I used to be so afraid of it, and now I'm like embracing that it's kind of cool because right. you can see how other people do things without looking at it like from a fan perspective or yeah. like a, a like popular group over here. Well, I wonder what it's like to be part of that or whatever it is. Yeah. And I said, I think like it'd be hard to have four dudes who you were buddies and you're pumped and like, yeah, we're doing this thing. Yeah. And then other life things happen to the point where you're kind of like, you don't see eye to eye on everything anymore. Sure. You don't want to necessarily – one guy's doing the same thing over and over that you're like, man, we talked about this. <laughs> sure. You just keep doing yeah. – why do you do that? And that guy might be doing it for a whole different reason. He's like, screw these guys. I'm so sick and tired of these yeah. guys. Yeah. And it just – it's not that you're not buddies anymore. It's like – it's when I – like another like just going back to the interviews I've watched with the Beatles where after they say like we don't really talk to each other I was always like what 
Never? Yeah. Like you didn't bury the hatchet? And it's like, but I think that's just dudes <laughs> getting older where they're like, yeah. we don't. We, like if they maybe all live till now, maybe you'd see them sure. like fraternize with each other. I don't think sure. you'd ever see them come back together. I just don't think they would yeah. have ever done it. Um, but and depending on like how it disbanded, it's I don't think it's like when you see a good buddy and then you move away to like for instance, I moved to Nashville for ten years. Yeah, and you you don't lose the closeness with your friends here. You're close friends. Yeah, you just kind of pick up where you left off when you yeah. see them, and that's kind of what it's like. You spend so much time together that you're like. Peace. Yeah. Have yeah. a good break. Yeah. Yeah. See you right. later. Yeah, I can imagine. Make good choices. Cause it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I that's why I just think it would be a hard thing because family does change stuff. Like and especially oh, yeah. having kids and all that stuff. And then oh, if man. you're the guy who in the band who still wants to rock out till yeah. he's fifty and you're like, yeah, but dude, like I hate to say it, we're just not doing that stuff anymore. <laughs> it's not happening. And that guy's offended about something. Not everything has to end poorly, but sure. I can see how you'd bump heads or like after time, you'd have to be like, listen, I love you guys, but yeah. like for the sake of like right. us being friends, let's just try something else totally. here. Well, to your point about like, when is it, where is the line of like, it's time. Yeah. It's time, you know, you just end on a high note or whatever. I think it depends on when the music, if you can, st this is my opinion, but if you can still make music that you feel is authentic and inspiring to you. Yeah. Uh, then it, I think it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it starts to feel like, like, I don't know, if I was writing pop so rock songs about girls and I'm a certain age and I haven't been to high school in forever, yeah. it's kind of creepy, dude. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Like, you know, there's, a, there's a line. You yeah. Know? So I think it has to be true to you. you know? yeah. like, do, does it feel honest? Yeah. Because yeah. if it does, I think just chances going. are someone else is going to think the same. Yeah, this podcast hasn't felt honest to me in like <laughs> from I day one. Yeah. <laughs> We've been stealing paychecks ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Artistically, we sell out. It doesn't yeah. matter. Mark and I legitimately, and this is something <laughs> that people don't get to see, but since we're videoing it, yeah. uh, you'll get to see some of the afterwards when Mark and I almost physically come to blows with one another. This is a big <laughs> sham. It's an act. Cody's yeah. going to have to come out after him and be like, he's going to guide me out before I say something. He's going to come in and calm Mark down about something. It's you know what I'd like. It's to just see? our life. Yeah. Cody, can you pull a blooper reel together? It's got to be. There's got to be some magic. Yo. Oh yeah. Talk to me. It's, yeah. it's like rock'em oh, sock'em. Yeah, we oh, yeah. thought about making an episode, but here's the thing: Cody would charge us about four grand to go through <laughs> all these podcasts. Oh yeah. <laughs> so whatever our fee is right now, he would multiply it by about a hundred, and then and then he'd pass it over to Rob. So yeah. Rob would have to do the grunt work. It's yeah. it's it's actually and full disclosure, he's only paying Rob nine dollars an hour. Yeah. So it, like there's a labor law. For lack issue of a here. better term, this place is bullshit. Yeah, and it's a sweatshop. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, it's been pretty good. Yeah. Shout out the the the, the last point there, like to Patrick's point about. I, I always thought when when I saw that like, we kind of live in this. Our generation now, we live in like the reboot generation, yeah. right? All yeah. these shows you watch when a ki you're a kid, they're coming back, and TV shows and movies and artists and, and, yeah. and everybody. How And I always think to myself, like, you're in it for the money, right? But sure. that may not be the case. Yeah. You know, artistically, maybe you feel like if you left something in the tank there and 10 years ago or 15 years ago yeah. or however long ago it is, there's still an appetite for the public to – uh, you know, to want to consume, there's still something from yeah. the artist standpoint that they still want to produce. To appreciate or, or, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that has to be part of it. There has to be an totally. element of the artist has left something or yeah. a new. There's, there's been obviously something's happened in the last ten or fifteen years where. But I know, think it's the same with music, where you see bands retire and they're like, oh, reunion tour. I think some of it, like like movies and remakes, because yeah, you're right. It's like our entire world right now. It's like almost like there isn't any new ideas. And yeah. mm -hmm. um, some of it, I'm sure, is genuine, and then some of it is for the money. I mean, yeah, you know, right. they spend right. it. Yeah, <laughs> is, yeah. Is it, we're in, back. Yeah. In your opinion, on pop culture, is it is it just our generation? Is it because the entertainment of of whatever you're talking about inside pop culture was so yeah. good, right? That it was so strong and had that ability to last in the same way as there are certain segments of the market that people still listen to 60s Motown. Yeah. Not only do they listen, they still incorporate that in, as part of their music. Downtown Millbrook every day. Right? Yeah. Like just cranking it out and, in the streets. And, really? Yeah. It's awesome. You know what's crazy, too? You know the Fuji's Ready or Not? How's that? Oh. Ready or Not? That Classic. I didn't realize that is like a, a song from the 50s or 60s or something. That's totally right. sampled. Yep. 
Yeah. It's crazy. So I've, I've been watching these. I love watching documentaries I, like Hip Hop Evolution or the history of hip hop. And Big time. You have, uh, I had no idea. Even that, even the opening scenes from um, NWA's movie. Yeah. You know, where. Yeah, that was great. He, it, it, it's Dre as a kid, and he, that's all he's listening to is these 60s Motown LPs. And um, there's also, there's a European group. Right, and I, I always say it's not. I always say Kraftworks, Daryl at the barn. It's not Kraftworks. <laughs> Is it Prodigy? No, that something works though. Chemical Brothers? Uh, no, okay. no. The name of the group is like it's I'll something like that. Names. Kraftworks. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna edit those keep answers going. out. More, but, yeah, um, yeah. Moby. <laughs> yeah. Dre was asked mm. who his biggest influences were, and it was Nirvana. Yeah, and I know, right? This group from. The 19, it's like 1978. They're like Scandinavian electronic music. No way. And he said those undoubtedly were his two biggest influences. It's a funny thing, That's music, awesome. eh? Like a lot of the times, the, uh, the worse off the guy seems to be in his life, the right. more attractive it is for people in general. It's almost right. like I can level with this guy. I'm not even close to as bad as this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think people want their rock stars broken. Yeah, yeah. they do. It's a crazy yeah, thing. You get one. True. I go Google something. This guy grows up a millionaire, but he's like a, a, a savant with the guitar. I mean, yeah. you're like, nah, you didn't earn it. <laughs> <laughs> he's not grizzled enough. Yeah, yeah, this guy doesn't know anything about me. <laughs> that's a microcosm. Like, that's our life. That's podcast. That's this podcast. <laughs> what people, people associate to us because of our angst? Yeah, because <laughs> we're broken. We're barely paying the bills here. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting charged exorbitantly. Yeah. We're sticking it to the man. Blackmailed, Cody. really? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then hoping guys like Trev come on and like just pick us up one yeah. time for one week. Do you know what I think would be the best thing ever to have Trev on for for the last half hour is we do something he probably <laughs> loves a lot and we'll get, and we'll be like, "Hey, what about this idea for a song?" And we give yeah. them ideas and then if they make it big time, we can say right from the pod. <laughs> Uh, let's. We are going to close out on this note. We're going to play a new game called. Oh, hold on. Oh, I what? I just want to expand on that. I, Does I was the, going do to, you was get people? Do you get? You must get people coming up. Be like, hey man, listen. I don't mean to be like this, but I got us. I wrote but a they song. Do. I yeah. wrote a song. Can you check it out? For sure. Yeah. yeah, well, to yeah happen. Happen. All the time. You know what? It's. I, I know that. you and I've thought about it. I I'm take like, it as an honor. Like people email as... you stuff all the time. And yeah. You don't. I mean, you, you do your best to listen. You know, you can't always have the time to listen to everything. Right. You try. Right. Yeah. Sure. And that's so. nice of you because I think most people would be like, can you just stop? This is not your job. That's my <laughs> job. <laughs> like if someone sent, if Cody even has the audacity to give us a podcast idea, we block him from our well, from our <laughs> podcast group for a period of time. And life. Like when we go out for beers on the like, every other week rotation. <laughs> Don't make eye contact that week. No, he's we, not. We, we don't want to talk artistic differences yeah. <laughs> over a couple of beers. Yeah. That doesn't happen. What do you uh, got for us here? That's uh, on the Million it's of Macaulay. It's good material. On yeah. the Million of Macaulay podcast, Trevor, uh, what we do is a fledgling you know, artist such as yourself, we try to give multi-million dollar ideas to so that you too can live the good life. Uh, the next song. So what I want to do here, uh, have you ever eBayed yourself? I have not. Let's see what's for sale. Let's do yes, on this eBay. Is, I would love neat. to know. Okay. You might find your boogeyman tape, dude. Yeah. Boogeyman. If the boogeyman is on here, we're buying it. We're it, buying it for 100%. sure. <laughs> we're never gonna pay the seller, mind you. That's gonna. Pat, that's your next opening song. There. One of those. <laughs> yes. Hundred percent. We got. It. We should buy something on here. There's gonna, there's gonna be probably some interesting findings. A thousand foot crutch TFK hoodies. Okay. Now you, you know. could flood the market with these. I think I've got crap. one of the. I love that logo. I love. Right <laughs> that's there. Pat's account. He's selling both his. of those. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Yeah. He's like, skip by. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Thousand, three days grace outside of Japan. Thousand foot crutch can't. What is this? No, I don't want that stuff. Okay, look at this. Thousand foot crutch oxygen inhale CD new. Sixty two bucks. Cheapers. Dang. How many of those you got in the trunk, Trevor? Let's get <laughs> onto some of these here. <laughs> Holy, okay, so that's the idea is that you sell, Love peddle it. your own stuff on eBay, and that's yeah, how. Those are uh, all my accounts. <laughs> look at this. Side A business. signed yeah. picture, 50 bucks. No one's buying that. Where's the. No, it's sold. Look at that. It's sold. 
Sold. Thirty two fifty five plus shipping. That's Somebody awesome. bought that. Oh, Pat. Oh. Jerry what? in the Philippines bought that. <laughs> Look at this. Welcome Where's to the, the masquerade. Fur- Shout out, Jerry. Fur- <laughs> love, you, love you, bro. Looking good in that Where's hoodie. Where's the furthest away that you have played from Peterborough, Ontario? Like Man. when we said earlier that you're number one, you reached number one in Russia, Australia, Finland. We didn't say that, did we? Yeah, we did. Oh, <laughs> welcome <laughs> back, Pat. Right. Did someone say it's that? It's almost over, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we talked about his big week, about him having a week? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just, yeah I don't just know. Read you the get transcript. a little wordy. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome back. But have you played in Russia? We have, man. We uh, Russia's actually a huge rock market. No little kidding. known fact. Is yeah. that right? Russia, Germany, uh, Amsterdam, London, those types Germany, of areas are just all about rock. Germany, you've got to compete with uh, David Hasselhoff, yes or no? <laughs> you've been on stage with him? <laughs> never, never. Never? Okay. He's no. way bigger than us. <laughs> oh, easy now. Easy. Uh, Rom, you know, Romstein bands like that are yeah. really huge. You and, know, uh, I got made fun of in Amsterdam because the only band that I knew, and, or any German for that matter, was Du Du Haas, <laughs> be <Du> sure <laughs> they say. And they're like, "Yeah, Romstein, yeah, okay, yeah, it's all you know." <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's no, they do, dude. They love rock, and it's it's so. It was actually really cool. It was really powerful for us to see because you go over there, it makes you feel ignorant, not knowing any other languages if you don't like myself right. and because you go over there and they don't know how to speak english but they you know they know every word to the song yeah it's so mm. powerful man like i don't do you take time to learn like japanese music or, no. you know what i'm saying like, yeah, yeah. That's what you're saying. it's a pretty yeah. powerful thing I was we're like, an wow. arrogant group of north america though but <laughs> yeah no it's just <laughs> north america in general we're just like english not english nah yeah. not having it where do you suppose we, the influence yeah. comes from for you what? know, for, for, for those people to, they, they found your music somehow. Right. Yeah. Right. And then consumed it. And not only did they consume it, they loved it. They couldn't right. get m- enough of it. They, they, they're calling you to come across to play live, to play these sta- Like, the, it obviously starts somewhere. Does your does your management team or whatever, do they, do they identify, like, okay, your sort of music would work best in this market. Let's try it. Like it has, or does um, it come organically? It's a bit of both, man. You, we do have distribution over there, mm-hmm. so you, you kind of, I think, as a North American band, period, to, they really appreciate it if you go over there. A lot of bands just won't do it. There's a lot yeah. of logistics, visas. You have to get a special visa just to go once in and out, and just a lot of work, and to get merchandise over there. So just logistical stuff. So I think a lot of North American bands don't do it, yeah. and so I think when you go over and you plant that seed. And it's you know, and it goes well, and then you go back again, and every time they man, they just appreciate it so much. Like, they are the ones who show up. They tan out the night before in line. No yeah. way, like, like really. That kind of stuff, like stuff That's you and awesome. I would never do, right? Yeah, That's awesome. It's just so the the dedication and support is just unreal. Like, what is on? We were humbled big time. What is on a TFK rider? <laughs> like, if you're gonna go to you're That's gonna a go good to, question. You're gonna go to Russia. Like, is one of the things like <laughs> I've got to meet Vlad. I need to meet Vlad or a signed print with him, no shirt on, riding a horse. <laughs> Is it like I need a bowl of green M and M's? Only red. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, you know what? If we don't have an exciting Come rider, on, we kind of stay. Give us We're pretty chill like that. We don't, you know. Nobody uh, like is new... killing beers backstage. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, and I wouldn't think that. No, but... uh, no cocaine on the list. But yeah, no, we just. Uh, it's more about the people, dude. So I, I, ours is strictly, to be honest, it's strictly gear. There is. If we're on tour, there is like a there are like lunch and dinner things so that we're not eating sure. the same thing every day, you know, because yeah, no people kidding. will do that. And but no, it's pretty it's pretty chill, man. We don't get too like oh, it'd be uh, fun I just see. for a some just people go ham on tour. That. Yeah, they yeah, do yeah. go ham on it. I guarantee yeah, you they which do. would be fun. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, we just, just we just never wanted to be that bad. All, yeah, <laughs> just put all of your like morals and integrity aside for a second. <laughs> just be one like, time for I'm our going benefit. to treat everyone else like they're lower than me. For this whole tour. Would you mind? Yeah, that would one you? Time. Yeah. Before it's every a- show, I want to pet a zebra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And like- I will not go out <laughs> until that zebra is here. <laughs> right. It'd be awesome. The zebra gets late. People are out waiting. You're just like, guys, I, I couldn't have been more specific about this. I'm going to ride it on stage. Where's the beep <laughs> and zebra? Yeah. <laughs> You've given me a lot to think about here. Yeah. Okay, it's- at the end of it, if you could just, we don't want to be a part of it. Like, we don't want to be attached to that part we of it. We don't? But- 
Well, not if he <laughs> like at the end of it they're gonna crucify the zebra or something. It's gonna be some sort of re- text no! me. Text me later, Pat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Mark, you're out. I'm in. I'm, I'm saying, going on tour. <laughs> some of these countries that Trevor might go to, like they might try to eat the animal or something. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know man. We, yeah, some. Hey, you know I can't what else? Can't speak to that. Some yeah, some countries I. think it's ridiculous that we eat cows. You know that? I understand so, that. You story. stand on your moral high ground all you want there, Mark. But. <laughs> so just like beef up the rider for us. Put something all outrageous right. on it. I'll send you send some. Send us a picture. You know what we'll do? We'll just go I'm in there it. with a 2-4, and they'll come in stone sober <laughs> after the thing, and we'll have wrecked the whole place. And they'll come <laughs> Maybe in like, that what? can be on the rider. Mark and Pat have to be in the room while we're performing. Yeah. And we'll leave. Two-man soon. party. Yeah. Where, wherever yeah. they go. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll play video games. Room. I can yeah. see that working. Real talent gets there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in. Crank and journey. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. For it. 100%. <laughs> Let's find a play out song because if Cody gives me one more five minutes, he's going to get five minutes. You know what Cody's thing is? In the ring. Uh, there's just so many Cody things. always does this. He always does this, and it's never for a high five. It's always five minutes left. I've got somebody more important waiting in the lobby. You guys need an episode of just full-blown Cody insults. Yes! <laughs> that would be it's right. the so whole show. easy. <laughs> yes. It's the whole show. Rob, get Cody, Love you, Cody. on there. Love you, get Cody. some love there for Cody. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. He's a good-looking kid. Yeah, he, hey? Cody, you see, yeah. You he's a good should have kid. had Cody and Trev together there because that might get Cody a date. Maybe. <laughs> He and needs a trying, lot of help. We're trying, Trevor. Fella, we're, we're, we're doing trying. everything we we're possibly can. can. He's I on mean, ChristianMangle.com. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, he's it's trying short of tying a stake around the boy's neck. I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> holy crap. You need a puppy, man. So, Trev, what if you could just this? – I'm not putting you on the spot, but – if you kind of a are. band that – Yeah. If you had a band that was influential to you growing up, would you just suggest a song that they sang? Can wow. you come up with one? Do you want to play your own voice out? I didn't know whether that's the <laughs> thing to do or not. Like some people that's hate never going to be the answer voice. I give you. That, yeah, <laughs> that'll never be the answer. But uh, just quick, if Mark question. might have. If I go to Spotify and I quick on this one and I go a thousand foot cross, you that. will see. Uh, Take the heat off me. That <laughs> courtesy call has ninety million downloads. Nine. You, whoa, that's Kai, one song. Oh, you didn't know about these numbers? Now downloads? I'm embarrassed. Okay let's, okay, let's embarrass the boy on the way out here then. Yes, I'd like to see this. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to read this. It's overrated. TFK <laughs> has been a continuously escalating highlight reel since their formation in 97. That sounds like serious. It does. <laughs> here, with over 1.1 million albums sold. That's awesome. You scroll up to the top, writer 11, Trevor McNeven. <laughs> 11 active rock hits, numerous soundtracks, la, la, la. It's been fun, guys. I got to go. Tally's <laughs> about 30, month, 30 million monthly views. Holy crap. I mean, that's getting up to our territory. That's impressive. It's almost there. You're making me uncomfortable. 206 <laughs> million streams. Holy crap. The boy... I don't know. I guess talent. I, be, I was go. taking pride in, in in my really good friend Trev, just l- looking at him like he's just a guy who just, you know strolls around. Yeah, he has a job. Now I'm true. gonna true. see him up on some kind of pedestal. Now. That's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Still just chiseling off a little bit here and there. Next Why don't Mark. you play your favorite hmm. "I Am the Storm" song? Would you like me to? You know, you have Spotify now. Now. Well, you t- couldn't went, didn't get off your wallet for like <laughs> I ages. I don't understand. That's ten. Bu- How could I afford to when we've got this going? No, that is a true statement. That is. At some point, can you get your agent in here to negotiate with Cody because he's ripping us <laughs> off here, like taking full advantage of us. This plays on late night TV at three a.m. Right? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> oh yeah, okay. it does. Just making sure. Let's uh, play some sixties Motown to go on the way out. I like here. it. Okay. What do you got? You need my keys. Oh, what for kind? Don't of we have a? Don't we have like a valet service, Rob? I should have asked for a water a long time ago. I didn't want to oh. disrupt things. <laughs> oh, no joke. He just well, asked for Neil his keys. Well, Neil comes in and out like he owns the place. <laughs> oh. The four tops are one of my favorites. Oh, that's good stuff. That is, is that a good horse stuff. running? It really is. Now, does it not sound like a horse? Or t- 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 a lot of you Come may, on. the recent public may know this from like an Enbridge commercial. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but you put this on at a party of a particular age group. 
<laughs> it's important to point that out. Yeah. It is important to point that out. But listen to that. <laughs> you know, I can't. I can barely hear it. Well, I got, I, you I'm may have just to... cleared the floor. Yeah. Post 2 a.m. I'm trying to keep it nice. Here we go. This is good. Oh, I know this song. Oh. You know what I changed lyrics to at one point in my life, my teenage years? Yeah. What? <laughs> I'm the best. <laughs> what an unexpected turn. Super humble. I can't believe that. <laughs> Episode 64 of the podcast That's was awesome, a boy. lot more than oh, we expected. Unbelievable. Yeah, a lot more than I bargained buddy. for, I think. You're going to come no, back thanks for having play me, boys. for us sometime? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Oh, now we're but talking. We're, ta- we're, ta- we're not talking good about... To hang, like, we're going to have to make calls, probably, and book... Appointments and pay money for that one, probably. You what, think? I'll talk to Cody's agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that the house could take it here. Yeah, well, we're gonna have to get a bigger venue. Yeah, well, Cody's out. It's been a <laughs> slice. <laughs> for episode 64, I'm Pat McCauley. McCauley. I'm Mark Million. I am Trevor McNeven. You sure are. Thanks for having me, fellas. Thanks Thank for you. listening. Pleasure is mine. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Million, Ed McCauley, podcast. Catch us on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. And thanks for tuning in to the latest show.